I wish more people also would talk about her background with gymnastics and, and the institution that she had to go through. And a lot of people that she was with didn't weren't competing this year because of traumas that they experienced. And for her to show up and do that, and then to show up in the last event, mind-boggling. Mind-boggling is, I think, almost an understatement for what she was able to do on the biggest stage. Nicole, good luck following that one up. What was your favorite moment from the games this summer? Yeah, and just to add on to that, yeah, I have so much respect for Simone Biles and, and everything, and just... It was it was honest it was inspiring to see her say like hey I need to do what's best for me. She let no one down at all. Make that abundantly clear. Putting your mental health first, you're not letting anyone down. I'll, I'll assure you of that. My favorite moment was Lydia Jacoby, 17 year old, going into senior year of high school, probably in it now. Uh, won the hundred breaststroke, and even more than that was. The home, her hometown in Seward, Alaska, going nuts. I mean, that was, like, listen, I know the Australian coach was crazy, and it was great, and forgive me for forgetting the swimmer's name, but, um, nah, this wins. I mean, <laughs> Alaska, first of all, Alaska, she's, like, one of the few Olympians from Alaska, um, and just, just watch her hometown go crazy over her, and she was getting second to Lily King like the entire time and then in semifinals to Tatiana Schumacher who did take second and just to watch her overcome and win the 100 breaststroke Alaska's reaction and then for her in the mixed relays her her goggles came off and she still swam near her best time with her goggles coming off do you know how hard that is to do listen it's I've, impossible I've, I've swam with blurry vision but i didn't get a best time <laughs> not in the biggest stage either like it's just what she did nuts i can't wait to see her again in paris hopefully um but i, I could say all the swimming caleb dressel was incredible as well and just there's so much good swimming man i love i love the olympics oh, we only have to wait three years for more Olympic swimming, so mm, that's cool. True. Exactly. The countdown to Paris 2024 begins. And to piggyback off Nicole, my favorite moment also came in swimming. Lily King and Annie Laser both meddling in the 200-meter breaststroke. Uh, Lily King got the silver and Annie Laser won the bronze. They're swimmers from the University of Indiana. And Annie Laser lost her father in April. And... There's a quote here from the obituary. Got this from the LA Times. It says, He lavished love on his daughter Annie and encouraged her big dreams. They traveled together to many swim meets where he was her ardent cheerleader. Win or lose, he always let her know that she is so much more than her athletic accomplishments. While Laser was more than her athletic accomplishments, she decided to retire from the sport in 2016 after not making the Rio 2016 Olympic team. She was working in-house for the athletic department at Cal Berkeley, and in 2018, she couldn't let go of her dream of becoming an Olympic medalist, so she decided to join the Indiana Swim and Dive team and decided to make Olympic history a longtime training partner and teammate, Lily King. I don't think you get any better than that when it comes to an to a United States Olympic athlete. That's definitely my favorite moment from the Olympics. So many incredible moments from the Olympics, guys. You look at gymnastics, swimming, basketball, rowing, archery, all these all these sports that we just really don't hear a lot about. Skateboarding, that was cool. Oh, skateboarding. Was it how old was that kid who won it? Like she was like 12, 13 or yeah. something? Yeah, Sky Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was well, there were several kids who were mm -hmm. like teenagers. Sky Brown's actually from my hometown. She lives like half the year in Huntington Beach and half the year in Japan. But she's also a Great Britain citizen, so that's why she was able to represent GB in the Olympics. Dang, which is kind of crazy. She like made national or she made local headlines in like 2020 before COVID hit for being like an 11 year old going to the Olympics. And because it got postponed, she was like 13 when she went, rather than like Dang. 11. <laughs> Okay, but still, qualified at 11. I know. I, You know, as we're older than when the last time we were here in studio. Obviously, time passes, but also time isn't real. But yet, <laughs> when the young kids start doing things like this, 
and you're reminded that you can't do those things. And we're still in our early 20s. Oh, man. Oh, man. Kids these days, man. Kids, kids these days, we say as 21 and 20-year-olds. I don't know how old we all are. <laughs> <laughs> we're still think, very much children, but I think, it's just wild. I, I think I still think I'm a child, but actually I'm about to enter adulthood because we're all seniors in college. Oh, I'm a 12-year-old at heart, dude. I'm very much a 12-year-old. <laughs> I'm a 12-year-old at heart, brain, probably bone density, and... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Many Anyways. other things. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from the Olympic Games and us really feeling our age and athletic or non-athletic prowess, <laughs> back into the United States of America, guys. NBA free agency this summer. You don't know Omna Sapon super well, but the NBA is her forte. Omna, what were your thoughts on NBA free agency movement this summer? Oh, man. It was just good to sort of have it back in its regular time frame. Um when it happened like late last year that was really odd for me so i was just glad that it was like summertime and it was somewhat normal uh but obviously biggest name to move was russell westbrook and i as a laker fan we're gonna be outnumbering nicole here a bit uh gaffy hey, and I, my God. i'll try not to be super over with it but um i still don't know how i feel about that uh it, I, I just keep saying I need to see it before I can judge it because I have, I have no clue what it's going to look like. I know LeBron himself is um, getting really excited about the Washed King Revenge Tour. Uh. This is so dumb. Okay, hold on. Let me stop you there. Because <laughs> you can't, go you ahead. can't see. I'm no, saying no, no, that no. in the most satirical way possible. No, and I appreciate that because I know she won't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see my hands right now, I have but I'm rubbing them together. I'm far more hard. logical about the Lakers, thank God. But... <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. But no, no, no. Let me Logic just, just... is out the window when I'm talking about my hometown team. Thank you very Which, much. Listen, I get I get delusional about the Bears in Michigan. I understand. But at least you hear my pain. You just <laughs> keep going. Which I respect. But my God. Any, okay, maybe if, here's your, what, team's, here's my maybe point, if your team's actually I'm... won, you'd be more like me. But your team's just always oh, lose. Come that's, that's okay, let me blow. answer to Omna first, and we'll get back to you. But uh, <laughs> just because I want, I want, I would like Omna to finish her point, okay? Um, just really weird this offseason when LeBron was like, oh, my God, you know, no one thinks I can do it anymore. And it's like, dude, you're in, like, what, you're, what, 18, 19? And you've won, like, how many titles? Like, no one, no one is saying you can't. It's just that your team is old. It's just really weird. He's just yeah. weird. Weird behavior. Yeah. It, whatever gets, whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you motivated, whatever gets you out of bed. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, but with that, yeah, the Lakers are super old, and they just signed uh, DeAndre Jordan, who is also old-ish, 33 years old. Um, Gabby, uh, do you, I'll defer to you. Do you have anything you want to say about the Lakers to lighten their... <laughs> I mean, the outlook isn't great. I don't, I don't know if it should be. I'm just... I'm on the fence where I just need to see it. What about you? Well, we... You know, the, the Lakers have two guys on their team that are that they below the age of 30. Anthony Davis, who sometimes walks and moves like he's 37 rather than 28. <laughs> and uh, Taylon Horton Tucker, who's, like, I think younger than me, which is kind of sad to think about. I, I, I think the Lakers have more potential than people believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good to be back, folks. It's really good to be back in person with Nicole Pinter, um, Nessa Pond, joining us. Uh, I, I, I think the, the Lakers still have something left in the tank, maybe for the regular season. The playoffs, uh, if the regular season was half as long as it needs to be, or if another global pandemic hits and they get a four-month break from March to July, then, yeah, they think they defend their title. But... Uh, that age, I mean, Carmelo Anthony is 37, LeBron James is 38, Russell Westbrook is, like, 33. Anthony Davis is 29, but plays like he's 39 because he's injured so much. So I don't like their chances come the postseason. But in the regular season, I think they will be fun to watch. Nicole, your Chicago Bulls apparently are back. Oh, my God, I get to be delusional about my team now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Bulls are back. I don't know if you've heard, but the Bulls are back. Um, what did it yeah. cost? The Cubs. I'll get to that. But uh, Bulls, within the first minute of uh, the trade, uh, 
free agency, my god. Uh, within the first minute, sign Lonzo Bowl to kick it off. Then we get DeMar DeRozan about an hour later. Later, And then for whatever reason, we have Alex Caruso, which I just think is hilarious on so many levels. fun. It'll be fun. To watch. Yeah. No, and I know Lakers fans were mad about it, so I was having a great time. Uh, yeah, Myself in- not excluded from that. Uh, <laughs> Lakers fans being angry about losing Alex Caruso. Yeah, because it doesn't really make sense for you guys. But, like, Lonzo Bowl and DeMar DeRozan... Alex Caruso drafted Io DeSumo, DeSumo from uh, Illinois, who was fantastic, you know, staying in state, which I love. Mm. Uh, oh my god, guys, we traded Lori Markinen. Oh, we did it. We did it. Ladies and gentlemen. Where did, where did he end up going? Cleveland. I have never Cavs. heard anyone take a vacation in Cleveland. Uh, that is, you don't get the reference. Anyways, uh, also traded, sign and trade, uh, Daniel Thies. Yeah, Bulls are back, and you're going to hear me go crazy when they inevitably win in the play-in, and that is my championship. As far as I'm concerned, they win the play-in, the season ends. I feel that. Thank you. <laughs> no, I like That's your all. chances. Yeah. Um, having I think watched we'll be, Lonzo we'll be Ball enjoyable. and Alex Caruso, um, as long as you don't have Luke Walton as your coach and play them at the same time, I think you'll be mostly fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lonzo is going to be back because he's not wearing the purple and gold because that's how life works, apparently. Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart. Julius Randall. I was Julius about to Randall. Say Irving. Where is my brain? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday at 7 p.m. and it's been a long day for all of us. All of these players uh, popped after they left the Lakers, after they left their rookie contracts or got traded. <laughs> As they should. <laughs> All right, people. Yeah. The Bulls are back. The Lakers are old. A lot of other NBA movement that we'll continue discussing as the show goes along. Uh, the MLB trade deadline. I'll be really quick on this one. You get to hear me be in pain. You'll hear me in pain again at the end of it. Actually, I'm better. Uh, I'll, okay, let me let me go over this. So the Cubs blew up the core. You knew this. This is old news. I'm just giving you my, my takes on it. Uh, when I wrote this back in June, because I was like living in a hotel at this time, no, I was very much not okay. <laughs> I was... <laughs> Okay, here's the thing. I knew people would be traded. I knew things were going to happen. Chris Bryant was inevitable. It was just kind of, what else do we do? And then Anthony Rizzo is the first to go? I'm not ki- I am not kidding when I tell you I was depressed. I'm not saying that lightly. I was depressed for like 24 hours. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I was. And that was... And to the Yankees? <sighs> Man, that was... That was hard. So Rizzo, that Thursday night to the Yankees. That Friday, Baez to the Mets. Bryant to the Giants within the, like, the last three minutes of the trade deadline. And Kimbrel to the White Sox. Um, but now I'm actually doing better because Schwindy City. <laughs> Frank the Tank, Schwindy City, Rafael Ortega. We still got Ian Happ. Wilson Contreras is like the last one there. David Bodie too, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm disillusioned with Schwindy City. So that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah, I mean... It hurt. It didn't feel like we had to do this. It didn't. I respect that we went all in on trading everyone, but it just didn't. They're just so bad. <laughs> it just didn't. Feels like it didn't need to be on like this. Like Zach Davies keeps going on the mound. Why? Why? Zach Davies should not have a job, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just, just. Gal- Kyle Hendricks is good, like here and there. It's just. Oh, man, but when when it's Schwindy City, when Frank the Tank hits a home run, I'm having a great time. But, yeah, I mean... A home run is all that you need to be pleased by your Chicago Cubs nowadays? Schwindy City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you give us some backstory? What is Schwindy City? Okay, so Frank Schwindel is Rookie of the Year. Well, he is. I said that. <laughs> he is. He is. He hasn't even been voted it yet, he, and you're already saying he's, he's Rookie He's hit the, the most year. home runs for a rookie. I think it's like 26 or 27. Um... Just been fantastic. He's just like every game, you know. He's hit a home run basically. So he also he has two nicknames: Frank the Tank and Schwindy City, and that's where that comes from. And I love him dearly. Okay, but enough about my Cubs. <laughs> enough about the Cubs. Why right? I'm sad. Going going from one team that's in disarray to entire organization that has <laughs> been in disarray for decades. The NCAA. Oh, I've lot been of... waiting for this one. Turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> Conference realignment, NIL went into effect about two and a half months ago. Omna 
What are your thoughts on all the commentary alignment and the fact that NCAA athletes can now get paid to play? Okay. Well, I might defer to Nicole on the realignments, but I will go in on the NIL because, man, I have been waiting for this. Dear Lord, I am so happy that athletes can make money off their name like any other college student. I know we had a show, and I went on and talked about this, um, but it's just so good. Like, there's no reason why someone who is making billions for an institution isn't allowed to have a YouTube channel and say, hey, I want to monetize this or have a sponsorship on Instagram and get paid for it. So very happy that that um, is happening. Jaden Daniels, the star quarterback here, has a, a, a little, little deal that's, that's super fun. Uh, <laughs> a pizza of all things. It's a JD5 at uh, Venezia's, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And um, I was actually there at Pac-12 Media Day when that dropped. And he was like very like, like funny about it because we didn't, he didn't know at the time that it was there and reporters were asking him about it. And I'm like, he was like, I don't know if I can talk about this, but they're like, it's out. And so he was like, yeah, it's a pizza. And we're like, cool, it's a pizza. I have not <laughs> tried it. Anyone going to try it? I plan to. I haven't though. I, pl- I plan to. I, I My idea, because I'm the promotions director for Blaze, I think we need to do an event at Venezia's Pizza. <gasps> we really should. That's okay. an idea. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Everyone gets a JD5, whether yeah. you like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even remember what's on the JD5. Isn't it like I, sausage and pepperoni? I think and it's, it's like, like a, a mixed... meat lovers with like sausage, or not sausage. Obviously, it's going to have sausage with like mushrooms or something. Interesting. I'd probably peel off the mushrooms, but other than that, I'd try it. But I will say this, when I was at Pac-12 Media Day, when he's talking about his pizza, there are other players there who were talking about, like, Nike NFT deals, and Jaden was like, yeah, I have pizza, and that just felt very Jaden, and I loved that. It feels down to earth, which I love. Okay, here's what it is. So JD5 Pizza features Daniel's favorite toppings, pepperoni, crumbled sausage, bacon, mushrooms, and extra cheese. I kind of like that. That sounds good. That sounds really good, actually. Yeah, okay, we're going to speak it into existence. I'm going to need to send an email over to Venezia's to see if we can do a fundraiser for Blaze Radio. Fundraiser do... for Jaden Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> not, as yeah if he... not that he needs us. <laughs> I was about to say as if he needs more money in his pocket, but... Actually, maybe still does. probably doesn't have a lot right now. Yet. Yet. I'm saying yet. I mean, yet. this is his first year being able months. to make... Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. only been two months. So, yeah, we could do a fundraiser for Jaden. He's got a lot and of... Let's, let's do it. I'm like, an NIL supporter. I will heck, buy the pizza. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, you know you know what's interesting? I just saw on Twitter that they released the top 10 um, most... Uh, like, like, the top 10 athletic director salaries in the country. The highest one is well over $2 million. Yeah, they, yeah. If an athletic director can sit around for a year straight and just get paid to watch all of these athletes make him money, then yeah, I'm sorry to say it, but 21-year-old Jaden Daniels, who's putting his body on the line day in and day out, waiting for his NFL contract to hit, he can make a little bit of cash wearing an ASU uniform. Period. But also, I know that NIL also comes with pitfalls and disparities, especially in women's sports and um, through race, too. So I'm as the time goes on we will cover that but from now on i am happy that athletes get to make money off their name yeah it, it's it's just if it, it's been too long it's been too long where the ncaa is just like like as the supreme court said violated antitrust laws like that is a very big deal and and it, you know it's only a matter of time before they co- are completely done but as far as conference realignment goes yeah uh so there's been even more since when again i originally wrote this in like i don't know june or july um, Oklahoma and Texas jumping the Big 12 ship for the SEC. That is known. Um, they're both going to get destroyed. I mean, Texas got killed by Arkansas <laughs> this weekend, so, like, LOL. Uh, that's all I have to say there. Big 12, this is this is new news, set to add BYU, Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston. Interesting. Poor Memphis is my take on this, uh, because they, they're just as good as these teams. They should be in with it. Pac-12 formed an alliance with the Big Ten and someone else. Wasn't it the Big the Big Ten, the Big 12, and the Pac-12? Not the Big 12. What's the other Power 5 conference I'm not thinking of? <laughs> not the ACC. No. Is it just those two? No, the, it's a three, three-way alliance. The alliance. All right, everyone search. Everyone... Google searching. College Football Alliance. (laughs) (laughs) 
the Only silence. Only on the future's female. <laughs> oh, that we are so, like, yeah. yeah. Okay, I got it right. It's the ACC. Big Ten, the Pac-12, and the ACC. They're all forming an alliance because their teams are quickly becoming irrelevant. So well, two are the their SEC is becoming like a super league of, you know, the NCAA. Hmm. Um, yeah, the alliance is for scheduling. I mean, probably we'll get like 10 years down the road and Michigan will be playing Virginia Tech in a conference matchup, I'm sure. But like for now, yeah, alliance is cool, but it can do a lot more. Than just scheduling. My my question to you to you guys is: Do you think we'll get a, to a point in college football where conferences will just not exist any longer? Like it'll just be like the SEC and the ACC, but it's just kind of irrelevant that conferences even exist in the first place. Not necessarily. I think we're going to get to a point where like the NCAA doesn't exist because right now, when you think about it, like college football doesn't have a governing body. Right, they don't, or a CEO, I should say. That's There's true. no like CEO, you know, like when last year when everyone was like, oh my god, do we play football or we don't? Right. And then they all started at different times. A CEO would have been really crucial for that. So they all just either played or they didn't, right? At the same time, or we're just not doing it. That's that's where I see this going. Is that the Power Five conferences are like, we don't need the NCAA, like we just don't need you. <laughs> Which makes sense. I mean, I guess the next decade, like you said, Nicole, will only time will tell. On um, any thoughts on this uh, realignment uh, alliance? Honestly, this is too far above my head. I could care. I could care less. Honestly, like these are <laughs> like That's fair. a That's bunch okay. of executives talking about things that I could care less about. That I know that I should, but I just don't. <laughs> it feels okay. like it feels like it's just money. Like, exactly. it's just, where, oh, it where can the money That's go? Exactly what and, it is. and I'm just like, yeah, I, I'll, I'll divert my attention elsewhere. You you converse yeah. amongst yourselves. Yeah, that's it's, fair. In the end, I think it's billionaires arguing with millionaires about broke kids and how they can better take advantage of them. Yes, to be fair, that's how it's always been. But yes, that is what it is. <laughs> so fun. That's what's going on with the NCAA. Uh, moving on, of course, from the NCAA to our last part of what did we miss... The WNBA. The United States won a gold medal. A lot of stuff going on in the playoff race. I'm going to divert back to the woman who has been covering the league since May for multiple teams. Omna Sapong, give us the lowdown. Oh, man. So, in terms of the Olympics, the U.S. won again. That's seven straight for the women. Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi won their, was it their fifth gold medal? Yeah, yeah. it was their fifth. Incredible. This is our fifth time being there. <laughs> yes, incredible. Um, in terms of the league that's what's been going on, the Connecticut Sun have been on a tear, and they are looking super good. I just saw them actually play against the Mercury, where they sort of dismantled them, and the Mercury had won 10 straight before that. Yes, that's correct. So watch out for Dewana Bonner. And John Paul Jones. Um, in terms of what else we missed, um, I should probably know more, but it's such a blur this summer. But covering them, I did cover the Sparks, who were up and down for the entire season. And I'll let uh, Gabby just sit here while, while we talk about that. <laughs> um, but they did play last night, and they looked really, really good. They, if they didn't win, they uh, would have been out of playoff contention. There are three teams um, in that final, looking for that final spot. The Mystics, who are 12 and 18. The Sparks, 11 and 19. And the Liberty, also 11 and 19. So, super close race to the finish. And uh, we'll see what happens there. Nicole, any thoughts? Yeah, well, playoffs start next Thursday. Yeah, uh, they do. I was talking about the Phoenix Mercury on, hypothetically speaking, earlier this morning. So, I could speak a little bit on that. Uh yeah, number five in the league, and I might have already said that. but um, I don't think I did. Okay, well. New information. There we go. Uh, two games left, Friday and Sunday, and yes. then it's playoffs, which is yes. just kind of nuts. And the two games are against the Seattle Storm and then the, the Las Aces. Vegas Aces. <laughs> yeah. So tough games, but the, the, storm, the storm looked like, they looked like Sue Bird falling to her, like, to the court yesterday. That's That was the total way that they looked they looked dismantled in a way they didn't look like themselves like which brought is crazy. back down to earth yeah yeah and if i if to speak on what i'm talking about erica wheeler totally dropped sue bird and it was great 
I mean, great in the sense that it was, like, beautiful to watch for basketball. Sue Bird, I love you still, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think for the, for the first time, Sue Bird kind of looked her age. Yeah. Yeah. Nicole, just Google, just go on Twitter and look up just Erica Wheeler, and you'll be able to see the play that Omna is referring to. I can't comment on much, but I can comment that that, that play was an absolute ankle breaker. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude. Dude. She broke her ankle. Totally. Totally. To further just paint a picture for the people on radio who can't really see it, I'm going to quote Miriam Swanson really quick. Uh, she's a writer for the Southern California News Group. Uh, she was essentially, Omna was her before uh, Omna's internship ended with SoCal News Group. She says, quote, in Erica Wheeler's nasty tone-setting crossover dropped Bird, who crumpled onto the court a contorted pile of limbs as the spark scarred with 23, with 17 points on the night, sank the open shot to make it 6-4. to four. Who crumpled onto the court a contorted pile of limbs. Jeez. Feels cold-blooded. <laughs> That's the best way you could describe it. Yes. Lots going on, of course, in the WNBA. Omna, anything else to add before we move on? Um, or Nicole. You know, actually, I do want to add one last thing in terms of the Mercury with Brittany Griner, who is just named um, Player of the Week, I believe. She has a career high four dunks this season, and she is 30 years old. Wow. Jeez. Yes. <laughs> wow. So, love to see it. Love to see it. What do you think that says about the women's game? The fact that there is a woman out there who's dunking at the rate she is. Um, I'll say what I hope it means. I hope it means that women feel more like they can practice that. Because from what I've sort of learned is that it's not that women can't dunk. It's just that it's not a part of the game. So it's not something they practice. Something that they, it's like something that they will use in game. Like you don't want to mess up or, or look, um, like you're doing something wrong or give up two points, so they just don't do it. So hopefully that means the future can see that they can too. That's the future of the WNBA. We are the future is female. We're going to take a quick break here on Blaze Radio, blazeradioonline.com. Stick with us, though. We'll be back in about 30 seconds. Damn it! Damn it! Put my stuff in jello again. Do it, I'm sorry, because... I've always been your biggest fan. Dwight falls from mainstream radio every time. Where is my desk? It's just totally unprofessional. Okay, well, you're the one who lost the desk. I didn't lose my desk. Okay, calm down. Where was the last place you saw it? Don't be fooled. Tune into Blaze Radio, ASU's local student station on blazeradioonline.com. Uh, welcome. Welcome back, everyone, to The Future's Female. Gabby Ducharme joined here, as always, by my legendary co-host, Nicole Pinter, and our new guest host, Omna Sapan. Guys, great show so far. We're a little over halfway through it. We're going for one hour this semester, which I'm so excited about. Transitioning from basketball to something I think Nicole's been chomping at the bit to talk about. She's got her hands raised, and she's cheering. Football is back. Start off with college. ASU won this weekend. They're now 2-0. and Nicole, what were your thoughts on ASU football this weekend? Omna, we'll get to you in just a second. Yeah, 2-0, uh, and I mean, beating Southern Utah and UNLV, albeit very unconvincing fashion. I mean, the first half is just, look, well, let me, let me touch on Southern Utah a little bit first. Uh, they cannot stop making, like, being undisciplined. So many penalties for, like, 112 yards in week one. Um, listen, I miss Sun Devil football as much as anyone, but that game went on for so long because ASU was undisciplined. Uh, they fixed it up against UNLV, a lot less penalties. Game went, like, a lot quicker but slower at the same time. Um, and yeah, both games, it was just like the first half was like, eh. And then the second half, they did what they were supposed to do, supposed to do for the most part. Um, got a ranked matchup against BYU coming up next. ASU moved up to 19 in the poll. BYU is 23rd, I believe. Uh, so a ranked matchup for the Sun Devils. BYU beat uh, Utah for the first time in 10 years and looked pretty good doing it. I don't know what that says about Utah, but I, I think the way ASU has played, like, this will be this will be a tough game for them. But, you know, Jaden's looked good. I mean, Jaden was – almost scared me how much Jaden was running around the field. But, you know, trying to make plays and everything. But 
you know, they look a little rusty, but, you know, hopefully BYU can, not that it's a tune-up or anything, but they're like, okay, ranked opponent. Like, we gotta, we gotta turn whatever mindset on, like, now. Like, that killer mindset on now. It just doesn't feel like that's been on for the past two weeks. It makes you wonder if they're almost coasting through the first two weeks of the season. Yeah, which they've kind of always done since we've been here. Like, I mean, they were, That's like, true. down 10-7 to Kent, or up 10-7 to Kent State at halftime, like, our sophomore year, two years ago. Yeah. And then crushed them in the end. So it was, it's just kind of like, yeah, they coast until they have to do something cool, usually do something cool, um, and then they kind of fall back down to earth. That's, that's just the way it's been since we've been here. I'm hoping I'm wrong, but with how rusty they've looked, and rusty is, like, the nicest way I can put it, hopefully, you know, BYU is like a hey. We gotta turn this killer mentality on if we want to win the Pac-12 because it is wide open. Because USC fired Clay Helton yep. this morning, um, which is like also kind of sad for Pac-12 fans because USC has been really bad with him. But like, unless you're Gabrielle Ducharme, you're pretty are happy you about UCLA? It. Yeah, this is USC. I know. I'm a UCLA fan, and uh, oh well, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Doesn't really make me upset that uh, USC's head coach got fired today. Yeah, and makes me kind of happy, actually. I can't wait until two USC weeks from now, Urban Meyer has health problems, and then <laughs> USC hires him. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am so you excited, know you guys. <laughs> yeah, there is so much talk about Urban Meyer and USC when um, they were looking for that new athletic director down was, up there. And, I was uh, waiting for it. We'll see. We'll see. Because so, things aren't we, looking good with Urban Meyer down in uh, Jacksonville. Yeah, and it was week one, and it looked bad. It looked bad. We'll get to the NFL in a little bit, but I don't know. What did you think? What have you thought of the Sun Devils so far? Yeah, honestly, I I can't say anything more than you have said. I'm just looking forward to BYU. That's going to be the biggest test for them early in the season. Yeah, I I don't have much more other much more to say other than that. I just um I don't know how they're sort of. I wonder like how much of the looming investigation is contributing to that. Like we mentioned, how they are like this all the time. I. I don't know how, what's inside that locker room, and I wonder if it's ever looming. Obviously, they're going to say, no, you know, we're looking at this, we're looking to BYU, we're focusing on the next play, but um, I wonder what's really going on in there. I'd like to know as well what's really going on in there. I mean, of course, there's a lot of controversy as well surrounding uh, Sun Devil Athletics, specifically the football program with whatever happened last year. Were there broken police? Were there broken security cameras? Were they just turned off for four months? Uh, did the Sun Devils actually cheat? And what kind of punishment will be brought down upon them? I think that's kind of a cloud that's hanging over the program. It's pretty probably going to be hanging over the program, even if they make it all the way to something like, let's say, the Rose Bowl. Yeah, and, and here's what I'll say about the investigation, too, is that, you know, I'll be real. AAC was not the only team to do what they did. But are they going to get the harshest punishment? Punishment? Wow. Yeah, you bet. Oh my gosh, this is like this is like a couple years ago when every whenever a, a more notable team would get in trouble and they'd be like, oh well, Missouri's going to get more sanctions handed down to them again. You know, it's always like there's one team that's a punching bag, so they can keep Alabama at the top. You know, for money, for money's sake. So you know, unfortunately, ASU is going to be that program that just absolutely gets it handed to them, whatever that is. Um, but they weren't the only team to do it. But also, the, the whole situation about how this got out, which, I mean, we, we won't speak about on here. Uh, very interesting. Very, very interesting, I think. Um, if you know me, it's a full circle moment for me, too, in a lot of ways. But uh, it's just, yeah, it's really, really interesting. It's, you know, it had to be this way. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Who knows when that those sanctions will come down, if they do at all. But, and, and you know how it actually is in that locker room, because we don't know. The, to be honest... And if we it, did, we couldn't talk about it, so... <laughs> no. That's true. To be honest, I think the sanctions will probably come down long after this era of players graduates and moves on. Long after the pandemic has kind of really set into society, it's probably going to be kind of irrelevant by the time the sanctions actually hit, just based on how slowly the NCAA moves with stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Omna, what are your thoughts on the NCAA investigation on ASU? Yeah, I, I I can't say more than what we have already talked about, honestly, but I I worry for these players if there's anything going to happen with the way that they'll play and also with 
the way that um, recruiting, I, I, I think recruiting will probably be the biggest thing that'll hit them in terms of before yeah. the sanctions. Yeah, you mentioned it. Recruitment will probably be impacted. A lot of things will be impacted by it. Uh, instead of projecting forward, though, we're going to move off of Arizona State and the Pac-12. We're going to move on to Nicole's Michigan Wolverines. I think we need to have a name for this segment, Nicole. I think we should call it, like, the Mad Michigan Minutes. <laughs> well, it's not mad yet. Okay, so <laughs> he checked Jack Johnson had the Maze Minute, which I'm really mad about because, like, I can't use that because that's just – that's a good – that's the Maze Minute. That's a good one. Um, but, yeah, mad – something like that. We'll come up with something. But I don't have to be mad yet because we're 2-0. and uh, Michigan beat Western Michigan and Washington to open the season 2-0. and uh, On the Pac-12 side of things, Washington is 0-2, one of the worst losses ever to Montana, and then just – Pretty much got it handed to them by Michigan. Um, I wish Michigan would let, like, Cade McNamara throw the ball. Like, that'd be a cool thing. You know, because we have, like, we have two guys who can throw the deep ball. Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy. We have, Michigan has not had a guy who can throw it more than 10 yards down the field since Chad Henney. That's, like, 08, 07. Like, it's been that long since we've had a guy who can do that. Because it's been like Tate Forcia who just kind of runs around and maybe finds something. Steven Three, who just standard quarterback, but couldn't throw it more than 10 yards. A um, few more guys in between there, Shea Patterson, who just was like terrified of everything that came his way. Um, I don't know what Harbaugh did, but uh, what happened there. And now we're here. Now we have someone, Wilton Spate. I forgot about Wilton Spate. He was good. But like, finally have someone who can throw it deep. And we're not letting them. And, and granted, these aren't, like, hard opponents yet, so it's okay. But, like, this is the time to work on that, get those reps in, like, in-game. And it gets a Pac-12 opponent, too, which, like, I, I know what you're saying, Washington lost to Montana. But still, like, those are, that's valuable reps, you know, actually in-game versus in practice. I love Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins. They're fantastic, but I want to see Caden or JJ, whoever's in. Cade's a starter, but JJ's great, too throw the ball. Michigan jumped into the uh, top 25 rankings right at 25. Um, Do you think they will be higher by season's I end? I mean, by season's end? Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. I don't know, because I don't know what to think about this Michigan team yet. My, my expectations are very like, yeah, we could probably be 6-6. Six and six. But like now that we're 2-0, and oh, I'm like, yeah, we're winning the championship. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. We're just winning it all. We'll, we'll be, yeah, we'll be number one in the playoffs. But Jim Harbaugh, ha okay, my last, mo my last note on this. Jim Harbaugh is back. I want you to know he's back. He's had some great quotes already. Uh, this is from Zach Shaw, who is a Michigan beat writer for 24-7 Sports and CBS Sports. Uh, this is his tweet. Jim Harbaugh said he's heard people ask him why Michigan ran so much. Notes that some, like George Patton, get their job done on the ground. Others, like Neil Armstrong, get it done in the air. Harbaugh said on Saturday they chose the ground. Quote, mission accomplished. He's back. He's back. That is just such a Jim Harbaugh. Oh, my God, he's back. Gabby, he's back. <laughs> he's back. Just he's back. Back uh, again. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, in Harry Potter, at the end of movie number four, they said, he's back. Voldemort's back. Yeah. Today on the future is female. Uh, Harbaugh's back. Harbaugh's back. Wasn't wearing khakis either, which is weird. Wasn't wearing khakis, but, man, I did He's got it. We're back. We're, go we're winning the championship. I don't know what to say. I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, I was Thank about you. to say, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you about Michigan football, because I don't think you know a no, lick about I, Michigan I, football. I was just listening in awe. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> which is probably not the best thing to admit on live radio, but that's what we do with uh, the Michigan segments. We let Nicole go off, and either in a happy way or a sad way, tune in in probably two weeks when they're like two and two and not in the top 25. And oh, we'll beat Northern Illinois. Come on. <laughs> Actually, no, we'll be 4-0 no, because it's Northern Illinois, Rutgers, and then Wisconsin. So tune back in three weeks when we're 4-1 and one and we lose to Wisconsin in like the most horrific way possible. <laughs> okay, you heard it. You heard it there first. And Nicole's just so we're clear, your scale is uh, between six and six and national championship right now. Correct. <laughs> yeah, tune in I'm in three very, weeks I'm to a see where we're at. Very grounded Michigan fan, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm not delusional like those other freaks. <laughs> Omna, she calls us delusional as Laker fans because you are. Actually, no, Omna's Omna's logical. I appreciate. <laughs> okay, Omna. so I'm delusional. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> your thoughts, Omna, on her analysis. 
Ooh, um, I'll just try to keep it logical here. You guys can go insane. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Delusion. Honestly, I'll let you have the hot takes on on live radio. <laughs> Delusion on the uh, on the end of Nicole Pinter. Logic on the end of Gabby Ducharme. Huh? That's what we're going with. That's what we're going with. Moving on from it's college. It's never been like that. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to be back, folks. <laughs> Moving on from college football to the big guys of the NFL. Let's start off with our favorite segment, Bears Corner. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you have enough breath in you to go through this after the Michigan? Yeah, wait. Why did I write it like this? Why is it? I don't know. I go from, yeah, we're winning to the championship to, wow, the Bears are terrible. Oh, man. Because, guys. Guys, 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 guys. guys. <laughs> God. Okay. Listen, I knew the Bears were going to be bad. I didn't think they were going to be that bad. Listen, the fact that they were still in it in the first half is kind of amazing because the defense was incredibly average. The offense was incredibly not good. And Matt Nagy's play calling was cowardly. I mean, this guy was going for it on fourth and 15 when a field goal would have made it a 10 point game. Like, like, this is like me and Madden. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, listen, I know towards the end of games, I freak out and just starting run four verts all the time, but that doesn't mean we need to do it in real life. Like, it's just, it, just why, why? And then to start Andy Dalton, which like, sure, fine. I hate Matt Nagy's reasoning for it. Like, you know, oh, we got to see him in the regular season. Like he hasn't been in the league for 10 years and been to like the playoffs for most of those years. What are you showing me? What is this? Yeah, I, I don't care. For, I don't. <laughs> for those listening, Gabby just showed Nicole a picture of Matthew Stafford after the game. It's, Listen. It's him with the game ball, and he's, like, celebrating very joyful and happy because he's no longer in the frozen tundra that is Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> frozen tund- tundra is Green Bay. Detroit is just just frozen. It's um, cold, too, yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just cold as you know what. Yeah, Listen. I'll say I'm happy for Stafford because I've always kind of liked the guy, but like the, the this is a lot really delusional too, where he left Detroit and all of a sudden everyone's like, oh my god, this guy's so great! Like we haven't noticed like he's in Detroit. He had Calvin Johnson for nine years. Like what are we doing, folks? I don't doubt he's gonna be good, but has he ever had a Sean McVay? No, but he I had a he had a Jim Caldwell. I say that, that satirically <laughs> because everyone thinks that that's just the magic key, which is like. Will it be better situation? Yeah, naturally, yeah. of course. Anything's better than Detroit, to be completely fair. But, like... Anything's better than Chicago, too, apparently. Hey, hey, now. Okay, when Matt Nagy's at the helm and Ryan Pace is sitting upstairs, yeah, sure. Because, <laughs> let me get back to the Bears. Um, yeah. Listen, Matt Nagy's play calling was atrocious again. I, I, my favorite thing is, is that he was like, yeah, I let Bill Lazor take over play calling last season. He took it back in the playoffs. Let's not lie to each other like this. He took it back. That's why it was horrible. Uh, use Justin Fields as a gadget player when it's like he, he was clearly the best player, best quarterback. I'm so glad. I'm happy he got a rushing touchdown, though. Uh, David Montgomery was fantastic with no offensive line, and the offensive line kept getting hurt. Uh, so that was fun. That was the most fun I had. Defense was atrocious. Um, I mean, Akeem Hicks got to Stafford like once. You know, like they got in the backfield a couple times, but not not often enough. The second, dude, we don't have a secondary. We have no one in the <laughs> secondary. Like, you know, hey, that Kyle Fuller guy, he seems pretty good. We should maybe be. <laughs> I say this because we got rid of him, and then two weeks ago we got rid of all our all of our other cornerbacks and safeties. We and Eddie Jackson sucks. This is just. If you follow me on Twitter, I said leave uh, Matt Nagy and Eddie Jackson on the tarmac. Clearly we didn't do that, but I think that would have been the best play of the day yesterday, um, aside from Justin Fields' rushing touchdown. This is just atrocious stuff from the Bears. Um, disband the franchise. <laughs> just, just, just start Justin Fields, and I can at least have fun with the situation. I don't care, you know. It used to be rookie quarterbacks just went in, and then they learned – even if they went 1-15, who cares? They were better because of it. I don't care if we're not in a Super Bowl winning position. We're clearly not. Start Justin Fields. Start the best guy you have on your team. Also, Nick Foles is still on our roster. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Just, what? We're paying him? We're paying Jimmy Graham? Who both barely saw... The, Jimmy Graham caught like one pass yesterday. I just... 
I can no longer with the Chicago Bears, but will I be ready to pour my heart into it next week and be ready for more pain? You bet your bottom dollar I will. That's all from Bears Corner. Until next week. I, lo I love Justin Fields. That's all. All right, from the delusional, pissed off uh, Chicago. Yeah, that wasn't delusional. That was very, very illusional, if you will. Okay, from the predict it was passionate, but yes, from, delusional. <laughs> from the passionately predictable, pissed off Chicago native to the logical stats based analyst, Omna Sapan. <laughs> whoa, whoa. That was a title I never thought I'd have in terms of football, but okay. <laughs> All due respect to Omna, she deserves that, but why am I so on the opposite end of that? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not hear the last five minutes of, uh... That was logical analysis. <laughs> of that Matt Nagy should have been left in LA. I called it predictable. I called it predictable. Yeah, because... Yeah, okay. Anyway, sorry. Go on. It's cause, it's not because you're predictable. <laughs> it's because the bears are predict predictable. Anyhow. Pain. Um, if we didn't mention the score, they lost last night on Sunday night to the Rams 34-14. And uh, how about Matthew Stafford on the third play? Or the, yeah, I think it was his, his uh, third snap. 67 yards, I think, then to, uh, I have this up. Let me just pull it up. Yeah, and then he, like, it was Van Jefferson, and he went down. Yes. And then they didn't, they just kind of watched him. Yeah. They were he, like, huh. He, he went down, <laughs> he got back up, and right into the end zone. And again, no that secondary. Was, that was Eddie Jackson, who was our Listen, I know we had a lot of pick sixes called back last year, but he was, like, our best guy two years ago. Now we only have Jalen Johnson, who is great, but we have no one else. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Sorry, go on. That's rough. No. Um, <laughs> that's rough, buddy. <laughs> I feel for you. So, yeah, the Rams The Rams looked good last night, and they're the, probably the team that I've watched the most closely. I wouldn't know if I'm, like, the biggest Rams fan, um, but just, like, you know, following LA sports, I follow them quite closely. So I'm excited to see what this looks like. I saw a very funny tweet last night um, after Jared Goff almost came back in the last two minutes. I was rooting for that so hard. I was too. I was like rooting for you, Jared. Um, but then someone tweeted like, what would Jared Goff look like with Sean McVay? <laughs> <laughs> wow. If only it was in Just another Just imagine system. those two together. <laughs> Just imagine Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay, which is what we're seeing now. So we'll see if, like, you know, I, I remember um, yesterday after the game, Michelle, forgetting her Tavoya. last name, yes, was talking about how Matthew Stafford and uh, Sean McVay finish each other's sentences, and I'd like to see them in a room together, and I'd like to see that <laughs> <Yeah>. live. <laughs> Of them finishing each other's <laughs> just to just to also put some uh, put some meat on. Nicole's argument a little further. She tweeted last night uh, some words that I can't say on air because they're tweet was it? me watching the Bears this season. It's a Malcolm in the Middle context. It's like, seriously, <laughs> all you do is, and then it's the B word. And then Malcolm responds, I happen to B word the perfect amount for someone in my situation. Thought... <laughs> <laughs> That's fitting. It's fitting for I Bears so. Corner. <laughs> I thought so. We're just going to change. I happen to. <laughs> We're gonna change the name of Bear's Corner just to the B word. Nicole. Oh man, I wish I could say that on there. I mean, I could. I, I won't. But it's I not safe. It's not safe. If it's not safe harbor hours and you can't say it, like that wasn't one of the seven. I couldn't absolutely, in no circumstance, say. No, I'm just kidding. Keep going. Oh, <laughs> but it would make a very like a uh, a nice alliteration for the I, name yeah. of it. But it would. <laughs> we're just not. We're just not at that point. Yeah, we're not an FM radio. No, unfortunately, we are, we are not Mad Dog, so we cannot. But yeah, uh, the other thing here in the NFL is uh, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, not a great debut. This is the first loss since like high school in a regular season game for him. Three hundred and thirty-two yards, three interceptions, three touchdowns. Um, again, Jaguars fans, I'm just sorry, Urban Meyer's your coach for the next um, twelve hours. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Now that that USC job's opened up, we'll see what really happens, right? I'm so excited. I am so excited. <laughs> he better take that job. My gosh. Yeah, because Jaguars, your only hope is that Urban Meyer, like, quote, air, air quotes doing a lot of work here, but has a heart attack. I don't, I'm yes. just, because. And there were also reports of him becoming, quote, unhinged in the yeah, locker room. Yeah, I saw that. So, 
Nice. Like, didn't like losing. It's like, yeah, you know, because you go to Florida. Did Bowling Green State teach him nothing about losing back in the early 2000s? Did he not learn, or did he get too comfortable not losing with Florida and Ohio State? He <laughs> got too comfortable. too comfortable. Apparently he got too comfortable with, like, Tim Tebow and whomever he had at Ohio State. I don't even remember now. JT Barrett. He was too comfortable them. to uh, sanction his assistant coach for, you know, alleged domestic violence, but... Just yeah. That oh, out and there. then the Jaguars hired a, a racist strength and conditioning coach, and then all the players were like, "Hey, maybe not." And he was like, "Oh, okay, I guess. I you forced my hand. If you insist. If you insist, I guess I'll fire him." Uh, yeah. I have one last thing here. We got time for it. Yeah. Or then, any any last thoughts on NFL? I don't think we have any. Um, any last thoughts on NFL? Uh, not this week. Maybe we'll go through uh, Super Bowl predictions next week. Yes. Ooh, never too sure. early for that. Yeah. Nicole, go ahead, knock out U.S. Open, and then we'll do quick future fantasies. Yeah, U.S. Open. Um, Novak Djokovic's run towards a grand s- calendar Grand Slam ends in straight sets against Daniel Medvedev. 6-4, 6-4, 6-4. 6-4. This would have been the first time since Steffi Graf in 1988 and Rod Laver in 1969 that someone did a calendar Grand sc- Slam. Steffi Graf did the gold calendar Grand Slam where she won the Olympic gold medal as well. Djokovic also didn't do that. Emma Raducanu swept Leila Fernandez 6-4, 6-3 to win the title. Raducanu is the first qualifier in history to win a Grand Slam. Um, Two queens, absolutely love it. And then a huge upset on the other side. Couldn't get any better than what the U.S. Open was this year. Raducanu and Medvedev dropped only one set combined the entire tournament. Wow. And that was Medvedev, just the one. And Raducanu joined the WTA back in June. Mm, So she's only been on tour for like very few months. She's her tour career is the same age as like a newborn baby right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, future fantasies. Let's hit it. Future. My future fantasy this week is uh, the WNBA will be the top headline going into next week. Despite that, college football is going on. MLB and NBA is beginning to get rolling again. Same with NFL. My, that's my future fantasy. That WNBA will be at the top headline. Uh, because they're entering the postseason, and it's been one of the most competitive seasons in its 25-year history. Do you got any future fantasies? So I'm not. I think we're kind of putting you on the spot. It's okay a little bit, but off the top of my head, I'll uh, say I uh, future fantasize about <laughs> people covering the Mercury more here in town. Um, I know people are starting new ventures here, and I'd love to see them cover the Mercury because I was there. Uh, Saturday night and there was not enough media and there was fans who love that team they were going crazy for that team the fans are here in the valley and they deserve more coverage I'll have a better future fantasy next week that's like more like sentimental but Justin Fields will be a starting quarterback next week that's my future fantasy (laughs) that's gonna do it for the future is female this week so good to be back on the airwaves for Nicole Pinter on us upon I'm Gabby Ducharme we will see you all next week same place same time Thank you.